This is Jo, I am the owner and founder of Oopsa Daisy and today I'm going to be setting up my September spreads in my bullet journal. We're going to be using our monthly subscription box for September which is banana themed so you'll see a lot of yellow in today's videos and our monthly subscription includes stencils, washi tape, stickers, a pen, all the good stuff that you'll see featured in my setup today. Any other supplies that I use, I will also link in the description below the video. So please do go and have a look if you are interested. So I'm gonna start off by creating a cover page on the right hand side of this double page spread. I'm using one of our font stencils and this was actually the banana font that was included in this month's combo subscription. So as I said, if you're interested in finding out what's included in the subscriptions, you can hop over to our website and I'll pop the link in the description below. But with all of our font stencils, there is a row of holes at the bottom that allow you to put the centers to the letters. The banana font is quite a playful font, so the holes end up being in different places. So you'll see as I go through and add text to the journal, I am just playing with where I put those holes. So. If you see in the U of the quote above, the two holes for the two O's are in slightly different places and that just adds to the playful nature of this font. So the quote that I'm adding to my cover page is Unana, what's my name, which is taken from a Rihanna song. And I'm pretty sure that when Rihanna sings it, she's not talking about a banana, but for the sake of my journal setup, she is. And I'm just gonna draw Eric the banana here using the stencil that was included in this month's mini one. It is a multi-part stencil, so it's really important to do the pieces of the stencil or the pieces of what you're drawing that are closest to the top. So for Eric the banana, his eyes, and then his top peel, and then going to his body, and then the peel behind, just to give a layered effect. I've also decided to use some of the paper bag that the monthly subscription is packed in as scrapbook style paper in this setup. I thought the black and the white contrasts really nicely with the yellow and it also is really good not to be being wasteful. So holding onto those paper bags and using them in your journal is a really cool idea. So I've just torn a piece and then adhered it down and added some of that banana washi tape just to give um, a bit of contrast. I'm now going to colour in Eric's banana peel using a yellow koi brush pen and once I've done that I'm going to go through and add black to all the text so that it's black block text. Now you'll see as I go through this video I have either sped up or time lapsed um, and cut out pieces of me colouring the text because it is a very text heavy setup and the actual length of the video after I'd finished filming was around two hours long and I've edited it down to about half an hour using some speeding up and some um, creative time lapsing just because it's very boring watching someone colour lettering in over and over again. So I've spared you that section of this setup and I've just included this bit in just to show you what's going on now. You may be able to see really faintly on my pages, I have penciled in all of these spreads before I recorded, just because this is quite a lengthy setup. I've got quite a few pages in this monthly spread and I wanted to be certain of how I wanted everything to lay before I went ahead and started filming. Otherwise it can become a bit of an indecisive moment. Now, I did forget to bring home glue rollers, so there is a small pause where I run to the office and go and grab my glue roller. And once I've done that, I can carry on coloring um, Eric the banana and I'm just using a light colored pencil to color in the actual banana. And then I'm using a darker koi brush pen just to add some shadow to the peel so it's not a flat color. I'm then going to add some more of the paper bag to the top. Now I have my glue roller and a little bit more washi tape as well, just to reflect what's going on in the bottom corner of the page and give the page some balance. 
I've decided on the left hand side where I'm doing my dashboard to use yellow scrap paper to make the, the blocks where I'm going to add in my information. The paper that I'm using is actually origami paper which is really nice for this because it doesn't add too much weight for your journal and you can get massive packs with loads of origami paper for not very much money. Um, I actually bought a rainbow pack which I'll link in the description below from Amazon which has got like a hundred sheets or something of loads of different colours so it'll be really helpful to use in different journal spreads going forward. I'm then going to add the text in to that page and it is just the month of the year so September for this journal spread. And aren't you glad that I have sped up the text section of this setup video because as I said there is a lot of text and it did take me a really long time. Um, I don't think I normally do quite so many headers in the featured font and if I do I definitely don't colour all of them in so yeah it took me a while. You'll also note if you've been around here a little while that I've bought myself a little guillotine for home use which I'm loving so far. Um, I'll link that as well below because I'm sure I'll get questions about it. Um, but it makes much nicer um, cut pieces if you're adding them in, much straighter lines. But even though I used a guillotine and I attempted to measure, I did get the size of these boxes wrong and I end up trimming them with a pair of scissors nonetheless. So my plan for these four boxes is to have an area for events, an area for focus, and then an area for my goals, both personal and and also work related, just so that I'm really clear of what I am attempting to achieve during the month of September. I'm then gonna go in and add some more washi tape. And after that, it is time to go ahead and set up my monthly calendar for September, which is going to be a circle tracker. So if you've never used a circular calendar layout or a circular habit tracker before, it's a really fun one to play with. We have a stencil to help the setup make it much quicker, which is our circular tracker classic stencil. And if you'd like a step by step video of how to do this, I will link it uh, into the video so that you can click over and have a look um, at a much slower pace. But basically the stencil allows us to divide those circles up into 32 spaces. So you have enough room to write every day of the month and then you've got spare spaces so that you can add in a key if perhaps you were using each of the rings of the circle tracker to track a different habit. I'm just adding in the days of the month around the edge of the ring and, and then I'm blocking out the two spaces that I won't be using because there's only 30 days in the month. I'm then going to add the header across the double page spread and my header for my calendar is going to be It's Bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S, another fun banana themed song to use within my journal this month. And after I've done that, it's time for a little bit of decoration. So I'm going to grab the banana washi and use it on both the left and right hand side of this spread. It's going to be quite a nice spread for having some negative space. Um, and also a lot of space to fill if I add in events as time goes by. What I like to do when I do use a circle tracker is to mark off which days of the month are the weekend and I'm just using that yellow koi brush pen to do that just so that it's really easy to see when different events fall. Are they falling on a weekend? Is it midweek? And to add in my events, I'm actually going to use some little post-it notes. So you could just totally write them in the white space around the tracker and then use a line to draw out from the date that it's taking place to the event. But just to add a little bit of extra detail and a bit of extra colour, I have cut these little post-it notes in half and I start using black text, but I actually decide quite quickly that I prefer writing in my orange Papermate flair. So that's what I'm going to do now and replace them. Um, just because it adds a little bit of something different to the spread so that it's not all just black and white. Some layers. So I'm writing all the different things that are going on in the month on little post-it notes and I've decided to use the darker yellow as anything work related and the light yellow as personal related. So again, I can see at a glance whether things are to do with work or personal 
and it also gives a good representation of how busy my week is for different things like am I spending all of my time on work the answer is probably yes um but yeah I I just wanted a a slightly different way of representing stuff on the page and then I'm just using those lines just to go out and tag where the event happens and you can cross over the lines and make it as much of a kind of crime scene <laughs> you know with like the bits of string pulling out to the different things as much as you like or you can have them all be separate like I have totally up to you but it's a nice nice representation of your month and then going in and finishing the header for the page which I've taken in shifts because at this point I was getting pretty bored of writing headers What's really cool with the circular layout is that you can use it to do a combined calendar and habit tracker. So you could use that inside ring there on the circle tracker to track a habit that you want to um, follow for the month or a mood tracker, for example. You can also add in further rings. So as you go inwards, so you can track more than one habit. It's quite a flexible layout um, and it allows you to do lots of different things depending on what you want to do. You've just seen me there do a external ring for an event that is going on over a number of days in the month. So that's how I would represent that on a circular tracker, having like a catch all over five days and I'm actually going away, I'm going to the Isle of Wight. So I have just popped that onto the calendar and I'm just going through step by step, adding in all of my events. And I will also add a little key at the top to say the darker orange is for work based things and the lighter orange is for personal tasks. Now, it was getting pretty late in the day at this point. So I actually decided to take a break, switch off my camera and finish off filming the next day. So I will catch you tomorrow in about two seconds. So it's day two of my September setup and I have completed two of the spreads. You'll note that after I stopped recording last night, I actually did change a little bit on this page. I added these like strips of the paper bag because I felt like this page wasn't really matching the rest of the theme. So I didn't catch that on film. Um, it was a bit of an on a whim thing. Um, but I'm much happier with how that looks now. I've got my calendar wheel set up for the month. And now I'm going to go in and set up my content planner. So I hope you're ready. Let's plan. So my content planner for this month is a little bit different to previous monthly layouts. I've decided to use our month on a page super easy stencil to create a calendar. The boxes are pretty teeny weeny for the month on a page, but the idea is that you would use a key, which I'm going to create at the bottom here to represent the different elements of content that I'll be posting on different days. So I will have a key for my YouTube videos, my YouTube shorts, blog posts, newsletters and events that are happening within the business. And I'll be able to represent those within the calendar. And then on the right hand side of the spread, I will actually be creating a table for me to log all of the different things that I need to create. So different videos that I need to film, different blog posts that I need to write, different newsletters that I need to write will all go in that content planner and I'll be able to see at a glance how it all fills across the month that I'm not too heavy for content at the beginning of the month, perhaps with nothing going on at the end of the month, just allowing me to lay it out a bit more easily. I've added a little banana skin at the bottom because the header that I'm going to use for this content planner is appealing content. See what I did there? Really working with the banana puns this month. And there are so many to choose from. It is puntiful. Is that even a thing? You know, I know what I mean anyway. So I am again going in with the banana font and just to add a heading across the top of the pages that I will colour in. I time lapse that process again. And once I've done that, I'm going to use some of the stickers that came with the mini one just to add the days across the top of the calendar. 
to be honest it's more decoration than anything because i know i always use a monday start calendar um so it's not like i'm gonna get confused but it's nice to use them and add a little bit of decoration and then i'm just adding in the dates into each box just in a tiny font in the corner just to allow me to quickly at a glance see what date things are happening and uh, again i'm going to go in and follow finish that lettering across the top of the page um once i've done that it's all about setting up the tables which is a nice easy process we like things with, with tables they make life easy and again you can see that i've penciled in what i'm doing i did decide to move the key from the right hand side of the page to the left hand side of the double spread just so that it would give me more room in the table to plan out what's going on and i'm going to add another banana skin to the top corner just to really highlight how appealing it is if you don't have to plan out social media content this calendar still would work in so many ways you could potentially use it as a family calendar and perhaps different members of the family have a different color code that you could add in or you could use it as a school timetable um a work rotor basically anything that you could represent with either a color or a symbol within the calendar that you could then add the detail over into the table on the right hand side it's just a different way of laying out your content and if you like to have a calendar in a single page rather than across double pages or perhaps you want a table to write more information about each individual event that's going on perhaps an address of where you need to be um i don't know timings loads of different ways you could use it so yeah i'd love to know if you utilize the single month page monthly spread how do you use it and how do you make it work for you i'm just adding in those symbols now so that you can see how it comes together i've added in my exclamation marks to the calendar which are events that are happening for oopsie daisy and then i'm adding the date in the first column of the table and then what is going on and then a tick for when it's done and i've basically done two lots of information like two tables worth of information because i had room to do that so it means that i can put all the youtube stuff on the right hand side and all of the non-youtube stuff on the left hand side of the spread So the next double page spread that I'm going to set up is going to be my master to-do list for the month. I always have a master to-do list page in every monthly setup that I do. It enables me to migrate all the tasks from the previous month or weekly spreads. And also it is a brain dump exercise for me. At the beginning of each month, I like to just get onto paper everything that's going around in my head all the tasks that I've got in my phone, all the tasks that I've got in bits of paper, because although I have a journal, I am a nightmare for writing things down on post-it notes um, and having them everywhere. So just putting everything into one place um, so that I can then cross off anything that's no longer relevant, but also make sure that nothing's forgotten, nothing gets left behind in a previous weekly spread. So my monthly to-do list is where I would do that and I've added in another pun a whole bunch of tasks as the title for this um, and I'm just using a little Eric the banana to decorate the page I'm actually going to split this to-do list into four columns so I've got my personal tasks my someday tasks my this month tasks and then my urgent tasks so urgent will basically be anything that needs to get done in the next week this month kind of does what it says on the tin it's anything that needs to get done this month my someday tasks are anything that needs to happen at some point but it's not super urgent right now it's also where i can it's kind of the later base basically so where i add in everything that we would like to do with the website or projects that we'd like to do going forward but they they haven't got a date a firm date yet they're just kind of it would be nice to do them but we have we got time right now and then personal tasks goes in a separate column just so that i can keep them separate in my mind and work through them i don't tend to have as many personal tasks as i do work-based tasks hence why three quarters of this double page spread will be for work related things and just one column will be for 
personal things and when I'm setting up these spreads I always do like a load of check boxes that don't have a row gap between them on my daily spreads you'll quite often see me do check boxes that's like a check box and then a, a row gap and then another check box so that I've got some space around them with these I don't really I want everything to fit on one page so I squish everything together and then I've just done a yellow highlight across the top of those columns which will be where I add the header in I will just let that yellow highlight dry before I add a header in because otherwise you're just going to get like bleed with the the pen on the highlighter it's not what we're looking for so I'm just going across those little columns and making individual check boxes. And then it's time for me to go on to a brand new spread for me, a finance tracker. So there is a reason why I want to include this this month and I don't generally include anything financial in my journal. It's a really fun time for me at the moment because it's time for me to remortgage. Um, my mortgage terms are up, so I'm in the process of remortgaging, which fingers crossed by the time this video goes out will be completed so I thought it would be a really good thing to do to kind of have a almost audit on what I'm spending household bills what's coming in what's going out I mean if you live in the UK at the moment um, and you have a mortgage and you're due to renew you will know it's very likely that your mortgage price has gone up mine definitely has so being on top of my budgeting is important so what I'm going to do is create this spread this month and if I find it useful then it might be something that I repeat going forward I definitely think it'd be good to keep track of those incomings and outgoings so I've created two columns on the left hand page one is going to be for house related bills because I keep them in two separate bank accounts so house related bills and then personal outgoings and then the smaller boxes that I'm doing on the right hand side of the spread are going to be for everything coming in to my bank everything going out of my bank any standing kind of debt which could be a credit card for example and then an overall summary of where I stand financially and then on the right hand side of the spread I'm going to create myself a no spend tracker for September because I think it would be good for me. I am terrible for deciding I want something and ordering it off Amazon and it arrives the next day. <laughs> I probably should put more thought into that. Um, so I'm creating myself a little no spend tracker for the month of September. And at the bottom of that tracker, I'm just gonna write the rules of my no spend, which is that it doesn't include groceries. It doesn't include planned spend. So if I have events that I have planned that I'm going to that's fine it doesn't include gifts if I need to buy gifts for any birthday presents or anything and it doesn't include pet care because that's never planned but <laughs> often with my animals it seems to pop up and I don't really have much choice in it so I don't think that that should count against me on a no spend challenge and then just adding in the headers to each of those columns in the orange paper mate flare so that it matches the other pen that I've used across the spread and that takes me to my final spread which is my first weekly of September and for that I'm going to use my week on a page super easy stencil I mean is it even me setting up a monthly spread if I don't use this stencil it's become one of my absolute favorites and still every time I use it I manage to make that box wiggly I don't know what it is because I go in really confident <laughs> I don't hold the stencil still but I'm creating like a column of boxes for my week and I'm just correcting where I've gone wrong on that box there so each one of those boxes will represent a day and I'm using the stickers from the mini one for the days that fall into September and for the four days at the beginning of the week which are still in August I'm using a different color date sticker just to mark it out that they're two different months. Then I'm using a few little stickers just to decorate the top of that column. And what I'm planning on doing for this week is rather than making an overall to-do list, I want to do like rapid logging, daily spread type things. So I'm just doing one highlight where I'll add in a header for the Monday. Um, and then 
as the days go on, I'll add in a new header for each day as I go through. So I want to do rapid login rather than planning out across the week because I'm finding that that's working better for me. So let's, so let's take a look at my September setup. It's very yellow. Um, but I'm glad that I introduced the black and the white because I think it makes it pop a little bit more. So I've changed my layout a little bit this month. I've got my cover page which is basically just like a quote page. And then I've got like a dashboard where I can put my key things that are going on so that I can get in my mind what I'm focusing on this month. And then going through my monthly spread is actually a circular spread, circular calendar. Um, and I've put all the events on little posties and I've just added lines so that you can see where they go. So it's very much like a visual overview of the month because I tend to find once I've got stuff in the calendar, I don't really go back and look at it. So it's kind of just as a reminder of what was happening in the month. And then I've got my content planner, which again is another new layout. Um, I've got my pun filled header and then I've got my tiny month to review calendar that was with the super easy stencil and then a key and then I've just added some tables there of the different dates that I need things to happen so that I can plan out what videos and what content is going to fit where. Then I've got my task list and I'm going to populate this in a minute and I am going to do a video of how I migrate everything from last month to this month what is the process that I go through to move that all because generally what I do is set up my spreads and then do all of that off camera but I thought it might be quite interesting to see how that works out and then this is a brand new spread for me for this month I want to track my finances so what am I spending what does my overview of a month look like and also a no spend which doesn't include groceries, anything that I've planned on spending money on. So if I'm going out for a meal and I know that I'm going out for a meal, that's fine. Gifts and pet care don't count. And then my first weekly spread, I've just got a really simple weekly overview. And then what I'm going to do is like rapid logging, but I've got the month, the weekly overview as well. Um, and I'm hoping that's going to work out. We'll see. I'll check back in and let you know. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video set up. And if you have, please, please, please give us a little subscribe, drop me a comment or a like, um, let me know what thing you are doing for September and I will catch you all next week in another video. Bye bye bye.